Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom Israel, Captain O.C., Officer Kimmy Well. And today is 15 minutes with the captains. Today we're going to start our dive into the seven major captivities, the beginning of Israel. We are going to go into the Egyptian captivity. Today's class is titled Born into Captivity. Let's get Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. We're going to hop right into it. The book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse 13. Uh -huh. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger. In a land that is not theirs, uh -huh. and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. So it was prophesied that Abraham's seed would be in captivity for over four hundred years. Now you might say, why would he prophesy this to Abraham, who, who these children not even born, but you're telling me his seed is going to be in captivity for four hundred years at some point? Go to Jeremiah chapter two and verse fourteen. We're going to get that explanation, but I want to show you something. Show you something that the prophet said. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 14. The book of Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 14. Uh -huh. Is Israel a servant? Is what? Is Israel a servant? Read. Is he a home-born slave? Is, is Israel a home-born slave? Because when you look into the history of the Israelites, we were born as a nation in captivity. So many might say, did God create this nation to be slaves? The answer is no. God is not an unjust God. I'm going to show you why we went into captivity from the beginning. Go to Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to start at verse 1. Because when you read, when you go to Assyria, why do we go into captivity? Sin. Why do we go into Babylon? Sin. Why were we under the Persians and the Medes? Sin. Why were we under the Grecians? Sin. Why were we under Romans? Sin. So you might say, well, why did they start off in captivity? There weren't even a nation yet. Let's get that. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 6 and verse 1. Uh -huh. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, uh -huh. and daughters were born unto them. Read. That the sons of God. That what? The sons of God. The sons of God. This is Abraham's lineage. This is his seed. Read. Saw the daughters of men uh -huh. that they were fair. Read. And they took them wives of all which they chose. So what happened? That holy seed that was set up from the beginning began to mingle with the unholy seed. What was this? This was interracial marriage. Because of our original sin in Genesis 6, Abraham was told your seed were going to be in a land for 400 years. So that's where that began. Read verse 3. Verse 3. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Uh-huh. For that he also is flesh. Read. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. So because of that, one, we were born into captivity, and two, our lifespan was shortened because of that thing. So let's get into it. Let's let's show you how did the Israelites end up into the land of Egypt. Let's go to Genesis chapter 37 and verse 3. We're going to start there. We're going to show you. A lot of you know this story, so we're just going over it. Some of you may not. You may have never read the Bible. What happened? Joseph was the son of Jacob, who changed his name to Israel. And we're going to show you what happened to him. Read verse 3 and verse 4. Genesis chapter 37, verse 3. Uh -huh. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. Read. Because he was the son of his old age. Read. And he made him a coat of many colors. So Joseph was beloved over everybody else, over all the rest of his sons. Read. Verse 4, and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more, they saw that they had hatred for him, read, then all his brethren, they hated him uh -huh. and could not speak peaceably unto him. So they hated Joseph because he was loved more than them. 
So let's show what happened. Jump down to verse 20. Because of that hatred, let's see what they did to their brother. Verse 20. Uh -huh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him. And cast him into some pit. Uh -huh. And we will say, some evil beasts have devoured him. Read. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. So, they sought out a plan to kill their brother. Read. Verse 21. And Reuben heard it. And he delivered him out of their hands. Uh -huh. And said, let us not kill him. Read. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood. But cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness. Uh -huh. And lay no hand upon him. Read. That he might rid him out of their hands. To deliver him to his father again. Keep reading. And it came to pass when Joseph was come to his brethren that they stripped Joseph of his coat. Uh -huh. His coat of many colors that was on him. Read. And they took him and cast him into a pit. Read. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Keep reading. And they sat down to eat bread and lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead uh -huh. with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh. Going to carry it down to Egypt. Going to carry it what? Down to Egypt. So now we're seeing the plot of how the nation of Israel ended up in Egypt. They were throwing their brother into a pit in Egypt. Keep reading. We're going to read down 28. Verse 26. And Judah said to his brethren, what profit is, is it if we slay our brother uh -huh. and conceal his blood? Read. Come, let us sell him to the Israelites and let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. Read. Then, then there passed by Midianite merchantmen, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit uh -huh. and sold Joseph to the Israelites for 20 pieces of silver. So they sold their own brother for 20 pieces of silver. Read. And they bought Joseph into Egypt. And they what? Bought Joseph into Egypt. So this is the start of our um, dwelling in Egypt. Go to Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 10 and verse 13. What you'll find when you're reading the book of Wisdom of Solomon, basically it gives a more detailed account of a lot of what happened during the book of Exodus. So during this, this class, we're going to go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon a lot. We're going to bounce back and forth. Read that, verse 13 and 14. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 13. Uh -huh. When the righteous was sold. When the what? When the righteous was sold. Who was the righteous? Joseph. Read. She forsook him not. She forsook him not. Because even while he was in Egypt, the Most High looked out for him. Read. But delivered him from sin. But what? But delivered him from sin. Why? Because the uh, Pharaoh's wife came on to Joseph. And he fled. He fled and left an example of us. Read. She went down with him into the pit. Uh -huh. And left him not in bonds. Read. Till, he bought him a, till she bought him a kingdom. I'm sorry, till she bought him the scepter of the kingdom. Right, because when after he deciphered the dreams, he was placed in a high position. Read. And power against those that oppressed him. Uh -huh. As for them that had accused him, uh -huh. she showed them to be liars Read. and gave him perpetual glory. And Joseph received perpetual glory for the things that he did. His name is known to this day as one of the highest men of integrity on the face of the earth. From there, let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 105. And verse 16. Psalms chapter 105 and verse 16. We're going to read all the way down to verse 24. Right now we're reading about our forefather Joseph. Showing you how how did us as a nation end up in Egypt. Got that? The book of Psalms chapter 105 verse 16. Uh -huh. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. Uh -huh. He break the whole staff of bread. Read. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. He was sold for a servant. What do we read about that in Genesis 37? Read. Whose feet they hurt with fetters. Uh -huh. He was laid in iron. Right. Because after he was accused of uh, adultery, he was thrown in prison. Read. Until the time that his word came. Uh -huh. The word of the Lord tried him. Read. The king sent and loosed him. Right. When they were searching for somebody, who can tell me what is the meaning of this dream? They had to find a wise man, a loyal man, a faithful man. Who did they find? They found our forefather Joseph. Read. Even then, the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Uh -huh. He made him lord of his house. He did what? He made him lord of his house. He made him lord of his house. Read. And ruler of all his substance. Uh -huh. To bind his princes at his pleasure uh -huh. and teach his senators wisdom. Now, this is heavy. Hey, so you mean to tell me an Israelite man came into uh, the Egyptian 
rulership, and he was teaching them wisdom. That's for all you Egyptologists out there. Read that again. Verse 22. Uh To bind his princes at his pleasure Uh and teach his senators wisdom. Read. Israel also came into Egypt. Israel also came into Egypt. We're going to read about that in a second. Read. And Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Uh And he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. And did what? And made them stronger than their enemies. So while we're in captivity, we became a strong nation. But what happened? Exodus chapter 1 and verse 5. We're going to start at verse 5 of Exodus. So now we're going to get into it. We showed you what was the initial uh, thing that happened to put us in that land. It was Joseph being sold. Now, how do we grow? Remember, there was a famine in the land. What happened? Everybody had to come down into Egypt. When they came down into Egypt, they realized, oh, snap, that's Joseph. That's the same man that we sold. And what happened? We began to dwell in the land of Egypt. Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 1 and verse 5. Uh-huh, we're going to read the verse 8. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob uh-huh. were 70 souls. So there was only 70 souls. Read. For Joseph was in Egypt already. So there was 70 of us. So remember, when we, when we jump down to verse 8, that remember... When you're reading the Bible, you can go from one scripture to the next, and that's 100 years gone, 200, 300 years gone. Sometimes when you're dealing with prophecies, 1,000, 2,000 years later. So keep that in mind. Read. Verse 6. Uh-huh. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. Read. And the children of Israel were fruitful, uh-huh. and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceeding mightily. Uh-huh. And the land was filled with Just them. Just like us here in America today. Read. Now there rose up a new king. There what? There arose up a new king. Now, when it says there rose up a new king, that means what? A new kingdom. There is now a new kingdom. All right. Read. Over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Now, there's a lot of debate about what time period this is. One thing we do know, this is not talking about the Hyksos. All right. Joseph, Joseph was during the time of Hyksos. Remember, I said this hundreds of years later. They had all the Hyksos knew about Joseph. How do we know that? Go to Genesis chapter 30, I mean 46, and start at verse 31. The new kingdom is pertaining to a different set of kings, all right? They didn't know the works that Joseph did. They didn't know that he deciphered dreams and all that other stuff, all right? Read that. The book of Genesis chapter 46, verse 31. Uh-huh. And Joseph said unto his brethren and unto his father's house, I will go up and show Pharaoh and say unto him, my brethren and my father's house, which were in the land of Canaan uh-huh. are come unto me. Read. And the men are shepherds, for their trade have been to feed cattle, and they have bought up their flocks and their herds and all that they have. So he told them to tell the Pharaoh that you are shepherds. Why? Keep reading. Verse 33. And it came to pass when Pharaoh shall call you and say, What is your occupation? Uh-huh. That ye shall say, Thy servants' trade hath, have been about cattle from our youth. Even until now, we? both we and also our fathers, that w- that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen. That ye may dwell in the land of Goshen. Why? For every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Why? Because the Hyksos had already been in the land. They had already ruled. They were abominable to the Egyptians. They were already known. Now, this is hundreds of years later when a new kingdom is set up. That now Joseph's name doesn't have that pool like it did before. All right. So that's showing you that the new kingdom was not the Hyksos. Now, let's go back to Exodus and let's pick up at verse nine. The book of Exodus, chapter one, verse nine. Uh And he said unto his people, behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. To do what? To serve with rigor. Read. And made their lives bitter with hard bondage uh-huh. in mortar uh-huh. and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. Uh-huh. And all their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. So what happened? The Israelites became slaves in Egypt. That is what happened. Guess it sounds very familiar to what happened here in America. When you read, we skipped over it for time, but it says they built them treasure cities, mm-hmm. Pithom and Ramses. But hard bondage. For over 400 years. That's why the scripture says the things written the four time was what? Written for your learning. Now, go to Genesis. I mean, not Genesis. Exodus chapter 2 and verse 23. So, we were in slavery. All right? Things are getting bad. 
What happened? What did the Most High God do for us? Read that. Exodus chapter 2, verse 23. Uh -huh. And it came to pass in the process of time Read. that the king of Egypt died, uh -huh. and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. They were crying because they were in bondage, slavery. Read. And they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. Read. And God heard their groaning and remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Remember, we started it out in Genesis 15. It says that we're going to be a stranger in a land that is not theirs for 400 years. It was getting around that time. Read. And God looked upon the children of Israel, uh -huh. and God had respect unto and them. And God had respect unto them, but they had to cry unto their God. Go to Luke 18 real quick, verse 5 through 7. I'm going to show you. That's going to be the same thing that's going to happen where? Here in America. But now we have to remember who we are and call on our God. But understand, the Most High God will hear our prayers. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 5. Uh -huh. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. Read. Lest by her continual coming she weary me. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Read. And shall not God avenge his own elect, uh -huh. which cry day and night unto which him? What? Which cry day and night unto him? Which cry day and night unto him. So we got to get back in the same mode as our forefathers. We got to cry unto God that what? That we are delivered out of this new Egypt the same way we're delivered out of the old Egypt. Go back to uh, Exodus. Now let's read verse 3. We're going to read verse 7. Then we're going to jump to 10 through 11. The book of Exodus chapter 3, three verse, verse 7. 7. Yep. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, uh -huh. and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster, Read. for I know their sorrows. Uh -huh. Jump down to verse 10. So, the Most High God, what? He chose e uh, Moses. He said, hey, I'm, I see what's going on with you. I'm going to send you, Moses. You're going to be the one that is going to make this thing happen. Read that. Verse 10. Uh -huh. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, Read. that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Uh -huh. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? So Moses was worried. He was worried. He said, Who am I to do this great work? Jump to Exodus chapter 4 and verse 10. The book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 10. Uh -huh. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, mm -hmm. neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. Uh -huh. But I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. So a lot of people like to use this to say what? Moses was a stutterer. He, didn't, he couldn't speak right. That's why he didn't want to go. He wanted Aaron. That's not the case. A lot of y'all don't understand Moses. I'm going to read something. I want you to read something about Moses and his education. This is from the Holman uh, Bible Atlas about Moses. It's page 115. Read the highlighted part for me, please. The Holman Bible Atlas, page 115. Uh -huh. She took the child in and raised him as the grandson of Pharaoh. So he was raised as the grandson of Pharaoh. Read. Educated in the palace of Egypt, uh -huh. Moses received one of the finest educations in the world. He what? Moses received one of the finest educations in the world. So our forefather was very, very wise. Read. Learning a spectrum of languages. Hold on. Learning what? A spectrum of languages. He learned a lot of languages. Just so happened Hebrew was not one of them. But he could speak very well. Read. And a wide variety of subject matter uh -huh. that prepared him well to lead and govern the Israelites after they left Egypt. You see that? And when you read in other books, it shows, it tells you that Moses was one of the greatest leaders of all time. So don't, don't let that, that thought process slip up that he was a, a dumb person. Mm -hmm. And no, this was a wise man that was educated in what he was going to do. That's why the Most High God chose him. Now, from there, go to uh, Exodus chapter 5 and verse 1. So now Moses is chose. The Most High said, hey, go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. We're going to read that. The book of Exodus chapter 5 verse 1. Uh -huh. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. That's what this thing was always about. That's what we're trying to get back to right now. We wanted to go celebrate our Lord in peace. Mm -hmm. That's what it's always been about. Read. And Pharaoh said, uh -huh. Who is the Lord that I shall obey his voice? Read. To let Israel go. Uh -huh. I know not the Lord. Read. Neither will I let Israel go. So, Pharaoh made his stance, and the Most High God was set in action. Now, we're not going to read through all the plagues. I'm going to briefly go over the one thing that a lot of people don't understand about the plagues. And once we get into it, um, 
is that every plague, everything that he chose was showing them that the gods of Egypt were nothing. That's what the Most High God was trying to show him. He was very, very selective in what he could have did. Because remember, he's the king of terrors. He could have did whatever he wanted, but he was very, very specific and detailed in which gods he wanted to destroy. So we're going to read uh, the first one was the Nile River was turned to blood. That was the God happy. All right. The second one was the land was infested with frogs. That was Haket, the frog God. The third and fourth one is kind of the same thing. Uh, lice, the dust was turned into lice. And then the other one was flies infested the land. We're going to read about those flies real quick. Go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16 and verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16 and verse 9. And like I said, you can read through all those different plagues, but we're going to skip over them just for time's sake. Read that. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 9. Uh -huh. For them, the bitings of grasshoppers uh -huh. and flies. And flies did what? Kill. They what? Kill. So when have you ever heard about a fly killing somebody? These were not your ordinary fly. The most high guy was killing them with flies and grasshoppers. Read. Neither was there found any remedy for their life. Uh -huh. For there were were worthy to be for they were worthy to be punished by such. They were worthy to be punished by such. Why? Because the most high God told them to let his people go, they wouldn't do it. The fifth plague was the most high God killed the cattle of the land. Alright, that was the goddess Hathor, or the god Hathor. The sixth plague was boils. Boils on the skin, on the face of all the Egyptians. That was to smite who? The goddess Katesh. That was the goddess of beauty. The seventh was hail. We're going to read about that hail. This was uh, smiting what? The goddess of the sky, nut. Go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16 and verse 16. We're going to read 16 and 17 and jump down to 22. We're going to read about this hail. Gotcha. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 16. Uh -huh. For the ungodly that denied to know thee uh -huh. were scourged by the strength of thine arm. Uh -huh. With strange rains. With what? Strange we rains. Read. Why was it called strange rains? Read. Hails uh -huh. and showers Read. were they persecuted that they could not avoid. Uh -huh. And through fire were they consumed. Read. For that for which is most wondered. For which is most to be wondered at, uh -huh. the fire had more force in the water. The fire had more force in the water. This is hell like you've never seen before. It was fire inside of hell. Now, if you think about it, that don't make sense. <laughs> because hell is ice. How is ice in 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 uh, containing fire and it's not melting? Hmm. Keep reading. That quenches all things. Uh -huh. For the world fighteth for the righteous. For the what? For the world fighteth for the righteous. So the Most High God used the elements to destroy. Jump down to verse 22. Verse 22. Uh-huh. But snow and ice endured the fire Read. and melted not. Uh-huh. That they might know that fire burning in the hail. That what? Fire burning in the hail. Uh-huh. And sparkling in the rain Read. did destroy the fruits of the enemy. And somehow he used all these elements only to attack. And kill and murder the Egyptians. Mm. But it didn't touch us. I'm showing you the Most High God is a racist guy. Mm. He is a separatist. He's only for one group of people. From there, the uh, the eighth plague was the locust. All right? That was against Geb, the goddess of the earth. The ninth plague was darkness. That was against Ra, the, the sun god. Let's read about that darkness. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 17 and verse 2. I like this. This darkness, was. it wasn't just... Uh, Turn off the lights and 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 you got to run back into bed and you're scared. This was some different type of darkness. Read that. The Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter seventeen, verse two. We're gonna read all the way down to ten. For when unrighteous men thought to oppress the holy nation, uh -huh. they being shut up in their houses, prisoners of darkness, uh -huh. and fettered with bonds, a long night. It was a long night. We're gonna read why that night was long. Read. Lay there exiled from their eternal providence. Uh -huh. For they supposed to lie in their secret sins that were they were scattered under dark veil and forgetfulness, being horribly astonished, being what? horribly astonished uh -huh. and troubled with strange apparitions. When you look up a strange apparition, that's like you're seeing ghosts. Mm. This darkness brought ghosts. They were like, because it's so dark, your, your, your mind starts playing tricks on itself. It's just like if you see a snake early in the day, you're out in the yard. The rest of your day, you think <laughs> you're seeing snakes. You're like, oh, snap, don't feel a snake. 
That's what was happening. He was sending strange apparitions. Read. Verse 4. Uh -huh. For neither might the corner that held them kept them from fear, Read. but noises as of waters uh -huh. falling down sounded about them. Read. And sad visions appeared unto them with heavy countenances. And sad visions. They were seeing stuff. Read. No power of the fire might give them light. The, the darkness was so heavy they couldn't light a fire. Read. Neither could the could the bright flames of the stars endure to lighten that horrible night. You couldn't see the stars. It's so dark. Man, it's so dark you can't see the stars. That don't even make sense because the, the stars are supposed to be brighter the dark it is. Mm -hmm. But it was so dark the light couldn't get through. Read. Only there appeared unto them a fire kindled of itself. Uh -huh. Very dreadful. Read. For being much terrified, they thought the things which they saw... To be worse than the sight they saw not. So they were thinking they seeing stuff that scared us. I can't even explain that one. That's just <laughs> nonsense. They were, they were, their brains were going crazy. I'm going to show you what happened. Keep reading though. As for the illusions. As for the what? The illusions uh -huh. of art magic. Read. They were put down. Uh -huh. And their vaunting in wisdom was reproved with disgrace. Because they thought they could do whatever God could. Mm -hmm. And God showed them. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a shut you up with darkness. You can't even see nothing. Keep reading. For they that promised to drive away tares and troubles from a sick soul Read. were sick themselves of fear. Uh -huh. Worthy to be laughed they at. They were what? Worthy to be laughed at. The most high guy was laughing at them. Read. For though, ter for though no terrible thing did fear them, uh -huh. yet being scared... With beasts that passed by and hissing of serpents... Read this. They what? That, mm -hmm. that they died... For fear. They what? They died for fear. They what? They died for fear. Uh -huh. Denying that they saw the air which could of no side be avoided. So this darkness was so bad that people were dying of fear. Mm. All right. This was not a dark night in the room. So from there, let's go to uh, the death of the firstborn. All right. That was against who? The goddess Isis and Osiris. Those were the goddess of what? Life and death. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 18. We're going to read 9 through 16. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, and verse 9. Uh -huh. For the righteous children of good men did sacrifice secretly. Uh -huh. And with one consent made a holy law. Read. That the saints should be alike partakers of the same good and evil. The fathers now sang out of the songs of praise. They were singing songs singing out of, the songs of, of praise. praise after they what? They had the sacrifice of what? The Passover. When you read about that in Exodus 12. Keep reading. But on the other side. But on the other side that night. Read. There sounded an ill cry of the enemies. Uh -huh. And a lamentable noise was carried abroad for children that were bewailed. Read. The master and the servant were punished after one manner. Uh -huh. And like as the king, so suffered the common so person. So from the top to the bottom, they all lost their firstborn. The Most High did not pity anyone. Read. So all, so they all together had innumerable dead with one kind of they death. They all died the same death that night. Read. Neither were the living sufficient to bury them. Uh -huh. For in one moment, the noblest offspring of them was destroyed. In one moment. Now jump down to verse 15, just for time's sake. Verse we're going to show you how this thing happened. Read that. Verse 15. Uh -huh. Thine almighty word leapt down from heaven uh -huh. out of thy royal throne. Read. As a fierce man of war into the midst of the land of destruction. Read verse 16. And bought thy unfeigned, unfeigned commandment uh -huh. as a sharp sword. Read. And standing up filled all things with death. Did what? And standing up filled all things with death. Read. And touched it and touched the heaven but it stood upon the earth. So that night, Christ came down out of the heavens and brought death upon all the firstborn of the Egyptians. And that night, they had to admit that they were dealing with the true children of God. We're going to show you what happened. That death was so bad. Exodus 12 and verse 30. All right, so we're almost done. We're almost done. But we're showing you this is the beginning of the Israelites. Then you must know where you come from. How our God rolls. Read that. Exodus chapter 12 verse 30. Uh -huh. And Pharaoh rose up in the night. He and all his servants. And the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt. Uh -huh. For there was not a house where there was not one dead. Read. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said. Rise up and get you forth from among my people. Read. Both ye and the children of Israel. And go and serve the Lord as ye have said. You see that? That's what we. That's all we wanted from the beginning. That's all we wanted from the beginning was go and serve our Lord. But it took for all that to happen. 
for them to let us go. So they let us go. Now, there's a lot of debating about which pharaoh was this? Who did this happen under? Was it was it Tutmaten? Was it uh, Shaka Amos? Who? Which king was it? Let's find out. Go to Numbers 33 and verse 3. Who was the king that was ruling when this exodus happened? Let's find out. The book of Numbers, chapter 33 and verse 3. Uh-huh. And they departed from Ramses. And they what? And they departed from Ramses uh-huh. in the first month, on the 15th day of the first month. On the morrow after Passover, uh-huh. the children of Israel went out with an high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. So it was under the reign of who? Ramses. When we would. So let's find out how long were we in captivity in Egypt. Exodus 12 and verse 40. The book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 40. Uh-huh. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel, Israel who dwelt in Egypt uh-huh. was 430 years. Was what? 430 years. So we're in Egypt 430 years. So now we're going to get to the to the good part. What happened? After we were led out, the Most High showed beautiful signs to us to deliver us out of Egypt. You think he just brought us out and then we, we just left us for dead? Absolutely not. Go to Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 9. We're going to read to verse 14. We're going to read just a little bit because like I said, I'm, I'm short on time. But I'm going to show you a little bit of what the Most High God did for us once we were delivered. The book of Nehemiah. Chapter 9, verse 9. Uh-huh. And did it see the affliction of our fathers in Egypt, mm-hmm. and heard us their cry by the Red Sea, and showed us signs and wonders upon Pharaoh, and on all his servants, and all the people of his land. For thou knewest that they dwelt proudly against them. Uh-huh. So didst thou get a name, get thee a name as it is this day. And the Most High God is still renowned for what he did in Egypt thousands of years ago. You ask anybody about it. You heard about the part of the Red Sea, the ten plagues? Mm-hmm. They know about it. Read. And thou didst divide the sea before them. And he divided the Red Sea when we delivered. Read. So that they went through the in the midst of the so that they went through the midst of the sea uh-huh. on dry land. Read. And their persecutors thou threwest into the deep into the depths uh-huh. and a stone into the mighty waters. Read. For thou lettest them in a day for thou lettest them. In the day by a cloudy pillar, and in the night by a pillar of fire, Read. to give them light in the way wherein they should go. And he led us by night with a pillar of fire. Read. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai, uh-huh. and spakest with them from heaven, and gavest them right judgments, uh-huh. and true laws, Read. and good sta- statutes and commandments, Read. and made us known unto them thy holy Sabbath. So after we were delivered, the Most High God gave us laws to set us up what? As a nation, read, and commandest them precepts uh-huh. and statutes read. and laws by the hand of Moses, thy servant. By the hand of Moses. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16. So what, what were we eating while we are in the midst of the wilderness? Because we were in Egypt 430 years. Imagine us leaving America tomorrow. Mm. I've been in Tuscaloosa, Alabama my whole life. I've been going to Walmart, make a D's. I've been getting uh, Piccadilly, uh, Wendy's. What are we going to do? How, what, what do you think the Most High God did for us when we left? Let's see. How do you treat us food wise? Read that. 16 uh, to 20. The wisdom, the book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16 and verse 20. Uh-huh. Instead, thou, thou fed us thine own people with angels food. What did he feed us with? With angels he food. He fed the children of Israel with angels food. Read. And did ascend them from heaven bread prepared without their labor. He gave us bread that we didn't have to work for. Read. Able to content Every man's delight, uh-huh. agreeing to every taste. And agreeing to every taste. Nobody had a complaint. Read. For thy sustenance declared thy sweetness unto thy children, uh-huh. and serving to the appetite of the eater, tempered itself to every man's liking. So nobody had an issue with the food. What about the clothing? Let's go to Nehemiah. Let's go back to Nehemiah. Chapter 9 and verse 21. So we had food. We had a uh, shelter because the Most High God was uh, uh, above us mm-hmm. in the pillar of the cloud. Mm-hmm. What about our clothing? Read that. The book of Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 41. 21. 21. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. Yea, 40 years didst thou sustain them in the wilderness. 40 years we were in the wilderness. Read. So they lacked nothing. They what? They lacked nothing. The Most High God took care of us. Read. Their clothes waxed not old. They what? Their clothes waxed not old, uh-huh. and their feet swelled not. So the most high, even though we're marching around in circles for 40 years, mm-hmm. your clothes never got tattered, and your feet never swelled up. And you had angels food for bread. Mm. 
But what happened? The children of Israel continued to what? Murmur. They continued to sin. That's why it took us so long to get into the promised land. And what happened hundreds of years later? We went to Assyria. We went to Babylon. We went to uh, Persia. We went to Rome. We went to Greece. Why? Because of our sins. So, as great as that deliverance is that we just read about, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? There's going to be something greater in these last days. Go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 14. And what I want you to understand is that guess what? All that we just read about, none of us had to do anything but what the Most High God said. None of us delivered ourselves. God came and delivered us out of the hand of the Egyptians. He's going to do the same thing here from America. Read that. There, the book of Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 14. Uh -huh. Therefore... Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, Read. that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. From what? From the land of the north. Read. And from all the lands whither he hath driven them. Mm -hmm. and, will, and I will bring them again into their own land that I gave unto their fathers. So guess what? There's going to come a day. When the children of Israel are once again delivered, not from Egypt, but out of the land of the north. Where's the land of the north? North America. Last scripture, Isaiah 52 and verse 12. This is for any of you brothers and sisters that believe that our captivity is going to come some other way. Maybe you think you got to flee to another land. Maybe the most high God going to change it up. I know he delivered us out of Babylon. I know he delivered us from Greece. I know he delivered us from Rome, everywhere. But maybe, maybe he wants us to catch a plane this time. Mm. Maybe he wants us to get a helicopter, catch an Uber. Let's see. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 52 and verse 12. Read. For ye shall not go out with haste, uh -huh. nor go by flight. Nor what? Nor go by flight. Nor go by flight. Read. For the Lord will go before you, uh -huh. and the God of Israel uh -huh. will be your rear reward. You see that? The God of Israel will be our re reward. He will be the one that will save us and deliver us once again, as he has always done the children of Israel once we repent of our sins and acknowledge who he is. All right, so with that, we say shalom. Power. While Haram was pushed... But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.